Hello, welcome to another nature date. I am here looking, hunting, fishing for sticklebacks. And I'm going to say now that I walked here, I did not use public transport and I'm on my own, which means that I did not bring all of my fancy equipment, including a tripod, because I couldn't carry it. Apologies for the shaky camera work. Um, but I am still in London, next to the stream in a park. You'll probably be able to hear that there is a motorway about 200 meters away. It's mad because look at all the fish. I had, until I found this park last week, never seen a stickleback before. So I've been, oh, 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 I can see a male. Oh, that's so exciting. Oh, all the ones I've seen so far have been females. So first, so I'm gonna get my net. I brought myself um, in my little rucksack. I bought myself uh, a fancy, fancy net, the expensive type. Um, I'm gonna see if I can catch them. It's perfectly safe to do. They're not um, protected or anything because they're so bloody common. But for some reason, even though they're so common, I've never seen one before. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna catch them and then I'll be able to explain once they're a bit closer why I'm so excited to see them. Oh. Hello, if you'll bear with me a few moments so that I can pay my rent. This video, very pleased to say, is sponsored by Magellan TV. They are a streaming service like Netflix, but they specialise in science and history documentaries. They've got the largest collection of science documentaries anywhere, many are in 4K, and you can watch on your mobile, computer, or on your TV. And I was watching Survivors of the Invisible, which is a beautifully shot documentary about the most gruesome things you can possibly imagine, like insect parasites and parasitoids. And it's so gross. It was right up my street. And if you want to watch that, you can do so for free. Yes, if you go to try.magellantv.com slash Sally LePage, then you can get a one month free trial, which you can cancel at any time. So you can enable my houseplant addiction and support this channel by watching free science documentaries. So thank you very much. Back to the sticklebacks. So of course, as I sat down, they all swell out further into the, into the stream. If I fall in, at least it'll be on camera. Fishing's all about patience, isn't it? Got it. Uh, Skinny pluck. Come on, there we go. <sighs> You're a female. And that is my first stickleback. Okay, now to see if I can catch a male, so we can compare the two. Oh, sneaky little thing. Okay, so here I've got two females, and they're just so small and so perfect. But I can see the males um, tending their nest just a little bit further out. But I'm going to try a different strategy because the males are a little bit harder to catch, it seems. Um, but that requires finding a slightly shallower part of the river. So we'll pop these two girls back and then move on to a slightly shallower spot. I can't believe I've actually caught sticklebacks though. So good job it's a warm day because it's time for a bit of a dip. Polarized lenses on. Watch out, sticklebacks. I'm coming to get you. Oh, that's cold. Before I had only females and no males. Now I've got four males but no females. I am not a patient angler. So I'm going to pop those males down out of the sun and uh, see if I can catch some females for comparison purposes. Oh, this is so much fun though. <laughs> the water is perfectly cold, the sun is perfectly hot. <laughs> I can see why people did this a lot as kids. So, by way of explanation as to why I am in the middle of a probably contaminated London stream. When I read all these books about eminent naturalists and they're like oh so how did you get into nature they're always like 
When I was a boy of about eight years old, I would go off into the woods with a pack lunch and I would go with a jam jar and a net and catch sticklebacks all day and make sure I was home in time for tea. Where I grew up, there weren't any sticklebacks. We had canals and big rivers, but we didn't have this kind of streams that you need for sticklebacks. So I never got to do that. And frankly, I'm jealous of all the people that did get to catch sticklebacks as a kid, hence this. But also, sticklebacks are, oh, oh, there's a female, come on. Oh, no. You gotta be patient with this fishing lark. No one told me you gotta have patience to be an angler. It's actually one of the very first YouTube videos I made was on supernormal stimuli based off a classic experiment by the only guy that's ever won a Nobel Prize for studying behaviour, Nico Tinbergen. And he was studying, at the time, sticklebacks. And they were able to watch these really complex behaviours but also manipulate them. We're in, what, May? So, bang slap in the middle of the mating season. The species becomes much more sexually dimorphic, so males and females look very different because the males go into breeding plumage? Breeding coloration. They get these really bright blue eyes and a very vivid orange belly. And it's that orange belly which is a a sexual signal to show how sexy they are as males. Got one. And you are a... Another male. Oh well, you'll still go in the pot. You can still be famous. Got five sticklebacks now. Five little sticklebacks. These are three spined sticklebacks. Um, there are lots of different species, but it's the most common one and that's because they've got three spines on their back that they can wedge up and basically it makes it really difficult for birds to be able to swallow them because the barbs just get stuck in the throat. I can't stop watching them, they're just so beautiful. The males at this time of year have got the most stunning blue eyes and although these ones don't, very sexy males also have red bellies. So none of these are particularly sexy. So you, my little pretties, are free. So one of the things that I've done in order to see this amazing territorial behavior of the males is just under the water here I've set up a little GoPro um, just there because I've spotted that there is a male just here um, and I can see that it's defending a little nest, a little territory so hopefully my underwater camera will be able to capture some amazing male behaviour and you can just and you can just from the surface just look down and see obviously where the nests are, like to the naked eye, there's absolutely no way of telling that this is a nest. It's just like a hole in the bottom, uh, maybe a little divot, tiny little divot in the bottom of the bed, or maybe there's a little entrance to a stone. You'd never be able to tell until you start watching the behavior of the males and then it becomes clear as day. They keep swimming back to it. They keep tending it. If there are eggs there, they'll swim really, really fast in order to send oxygen over the eggs. They'll try and entice females there. If a rival male comes up, then they'll chase it away. I am having so much fun today. I managed to see some amazing behaviours with the underwater camera, but I wasn't quite sure of what I was looking at, so I decided to rope in an expert to talk me through it. Uh, my name is Jason Kagi, and actually today I'm starting as an assistant research professor at uh, Penn State University. That's exciting! Congratulations! This is, I think, this is my favorite clip. Oh yeah, it is. Um, yeah, this, like this one is as well. such a sexy dude. Um, were those males he was scaring away? I don't know. I think it might have um, been a little both. I think a male was following a female, maybe. <laughs> So here you can actually fanning. see his, uh, the hole, the entrance hole, right below his nose there. Yeah. Wait, uh, that, that's a hole? Yeah. 
Oh, it's tiny. I know. Because I've read about them like, oh, the fish will swim into it. I was expecting to actually be able to see it. I mean, I was expecting the nest to be a little bit more visible than they were. <laughs> yeah, but, and you can't uh, even see it right now because it like it only opens up when he fans it. Yeah. And so him fanning, you were saying that they will do that even if there aren't eggs at the nest? They will a little. Um, it's kind of funny because it's like, why are they doing that? But not, not to the extent that we're seeing here. Okay, so... It's probably got there. Eggs you go. There. See, now I can see it open uh, yeah. again. It was just, it was so weird because to me it all looks the same, and then I just see these <laughs> males so aggressively defending this patch of mud that looks like all the other bits of mud. Oh, I know, and it's so funny, like how close they all are to each other, and yeah. Oh, okay, hang on, hang on. Okay, yeah, so this okay. is some good, cool stuff. So this this, this was the bit where I'm like, I need to ask someone who studies sex about this, because from a fly perspective, knowing nothing about fish courtship. I'm like, this has to be courtship behavior, right? Right. Um, so, okay, so you'll, yeah, you'll see the female wiggle. come in. There she yeah. comes. And then he kind of like nips her on the chin there and um, she raises her head a little bit. And then he does something crazy here where he actually is moving his back spines into her. Oh, so he's jabbing her with his spines? Yeah, I would like maybe, uh, it might be a little bit it's a little more violent than a caress. He's not he's probably not like actually poking her too hard, but he's kinda rubbing them into her. Yeah. Yeah, there he goes. So we call that a, a dorsal prick. Oh, and then he... there must be so many prick jokes you can make. <laughs> <laughs> and then see she's following him, so he's leading her. I mean this, this is exactly what we call these behaviors. So he's leading her uh, around to her yeah. and then he's going to get her to the nest but along the way he does a few little more pricks and kind of make he's making sure she's interested see how he does that little circling behavior yeah he's kind of you know making sure that she's actually like into him basically <laughs> not just because to me this looks like she's now harassing him which is right. complete opposite to fly world <laughs> where these poor females are like okay i suppose we can mate now but she's properly interested in him well, except when she goes and checks out the other she guy was although now she yeah now she's looking at this other guy because <laughs> <laughs> obviously i couldn't really see what the camera was recording at this point right. so i found this fascinating so was that not aggressive that was fairly aggressive yeah so i think he didn't like the fact that she got all up in the nest without having a little bit of a conversation first. Uh, so this is a cool behavior. This is gluing. What's gluing? So in the breeding season, males shut their kidney off for they don't make urine anymore. So in addition to like getting extra color and their testes getting bigger, they also their kidney completely changes. It no longer makes urine, and now it makes this protein called spigen. And that is a it's a glue, and they, that's how they stick all their algae and all the sand together. And so that's oh, okay. what he's doing so, so there. Okay, so it's what's holding the nest together. Exactly. So it's that bit there. And that is the zigzag. There. That's the zi that's the zi that looked nothing like a zigzag. I know it's a little frustrating sometimes trying to call them because it's because the zigzag is what you read about. I mean, I will say there's a lot of I've seen a lot more impressive ones. He's being a little lazy about it. <laughs> so is it the the fast movement, the stop, fast movement in another direction, stop? Is that what makes it a zigzag? Yeah, it's mostly the change in direction because some of them won't really stop. So, but it's the fact that he's changing, he's stopping before he changes directions, but uh, it's that change in direction and the, okay. the quick darting in between each change in direction. And all of this is just to say, look at me, I'm so sexy. Yeah, it's really, it's, it's incredibly obvious actually, like, uh, especially if you're at more of a distance. Uh, yes. So we're, we're like really zoomed in, but like if, if you saw one zigzagging in the background here, it would really catch your attention. Yeah. It like their okay. their whole body like flashes in the sun and it's and she's really checking it out. Oh, he actually rubbed her with his pelvic spines there. He's trying to get her in. Um, when he starts pelvic rubbing her with the his pelvic spines, that's that. There's a chat up line. Let me rub yeah. you with my pelvic spines. <laughs> exactly. um, yeah. So she's not trying to eat the eggs at this point. I, I wasn't think quite so. sure. And she's really fat. There was a couple of times when you like freeze framed it and you could see like her, from the back end. She's quite quite. She's got, seems like she's got a lot of eggs in there. Oh yeah, she is. She is what um, the youth would call a thick female. <laughs> uh, I do love this kind of side by side. It's it's I almost know. like a figure skating. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think now he's like, 
uh, why didn't you go in? Are you really interested? So now he's testing her out a little bit. So, yeah, so has she just kind of given up now? Have they decided that all of that effort was for nothing? It seems like it. And I think, because I think she, looks like now she's scoping out some of his neighbors. And he's just like, oh, well, I'll just... She's like, oh, well, your nest it. isn't good enough to get into, so... Oh, no, she's oh, back. she came back. She's like, one more chance. There's a nice dorsal prick there. That was a really good view of it. Yeah, he properly gets underneath her, doesn't uh -huh. he? Oh, there's another gluing. Another gluing. Ah. So I wasn't sure if that was um, releasing sperm or not. So that's just holding the nest together. That's right. Yeah, they'll actually go into their, wriggle into their nest when they release the sperm. Ah. It's doing a little so bit of after fanning. all of that dancing, he wasn't successful. Oh, I thought he might have had a chance. <laughs> oh, well, that was fantastic. Thank you for talking me through all that. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm so sad he didn't get to make. He was putting in so much effort. <laughs> and thank you so much for taking yeah, the time to, really to watch I mean, I, I could go on not for... having sex. I thought they were, I totally thought they were having sex. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs>